Hey everybody, how's it going? It's the Daily Shooter, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Vortex Razor HD Gen 3 1 to 10, maybe the best LPVO that I have ever used. So let's get to it. <laughs> Now, there's a lot of you who are watching this video that are not subscribed. If you wouldn't mind, hit that subscribe button and the little bell notification right next to it. That'll let you know when videos like this pop up in the future. Okay, so the Vortex Razor HD Gen 3 1 to 10 by 24. It's kind of a mouthful, isn't it? Well, like I was saying in the beginning, this is probably the best LPVO on the market today. LPVO stands for Low Power Variable Optic. So we can dial this thing all the way down to 1x, meaning that it has no magnification, very similar to a red dot with its illuminated reticle. But you can dial it all the way up to 10 times power and be able to hit targets that are further away with better accuracy because the closer you can get to a target, the smaller you can aim and the less likelihood that you're going to miss. So it does give you greater capability than a 1 to 6 or a 1 to 8. Now I was really excited to get this optic and we're going to talk about my experience with it. We're going to talk about the tech specs and details as well. But I was excited to get this optic because of my previous experience with the Vortex Razor HD Gen 2 1 to 6. A phenomenal optic, still exceeds today's standards, extremely clear glass, very nice reticle. That thing is just one of the best, hands down. So to up that from a 1 to 6 to a 1 to 10, I could not wait to try this out. I got this from Optics Planet. It is not an inexpensive optic by any means. So if you guys want a discount code at Optics Planet, all you have to do is use the discount code daily. If you guys want direct links or more information about it, just go to my website, thedailyshooter.com, which is linked down below. I'll put this video over there and more details that I can't add here on YouTube. So uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about the tech specs first, and then we'll talk about my experience with it mounted on several different platforms and several different calibers over a uh, length of time that I think gives me enough experience with it that I can bring this review to you. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off with length and weight. So you're looking at an optic here that has an overall length of 10.1 inches, which is pretty standard for an optic of this type. I am gonna be doing a comparison video not too far in the future between this one to 10 and the Swamp Fox Arrowhead one to 10, which is also a phenomenal one to 10, but costs a lot less. So we're gonna do a comparison later on down the road. So 10.1 inches in length, it is not super lightweight. It comes in at 21.5 ounces, I believe. So it does come in at that 21 ounce range and then when you add some rings to it obviously that's going to bump it up a little bit. We have a KDG quick disconnect mount on here. I use this mount because it works perfect with the SCAR. It's low profile. It sticks close to the rail and it is an extremely nice rigid tough mount. So again you're looking with the mount probably close to the 28 ounce range with the entire setup, depending on whether or not you have the throw lever, caps, and other things that you might add to it. Now the turrets themselves, these are very nice low profile turrets, they're cap turrets. And these turrets on this particular one, again, this is the EBR9 MOA version. There's again the Milrad version. Uh, this one right here has one quarter MOA clicks. So each click is gonna give you a one quarter MOA of adjustment. And there's a total of 120 MOA of travel, both windage and elevation. That means you can go 60 up, 60 down, 60 left, and 60 right, which is actually really good and gives you plenty of adjustment for the capabilities of this optic. Now, this optic is also waterproof. It's IPX7 uh, rated, so it is submersible. This is actually a really tough optic. Uh, it's shock rated, it's drop rated, it is submersible and waterproof. Uh, this really does provide a very durable package for your optic. So you can use this for everything from just plinking around competition tactical use you can use this if you are in law enforcement uh, or if you are somebody who's just a civilian patriot or something like that you could use this for just about anything it's got a, a very wide range of uses that it would be good for 
Now, one thing you should note is that this optic does not have adjustable parallax settings. So if you're somebody who's used to seeing a knob on the left-hand side that allows you to adjust your parallax between, let's say, 10 yards and infinity, you're not going to find that on this optic because it's preset for 150 yards. Now, here on this optic, they're using a 34 millimeter tube, which is by far my favorite tube diameter. And that's because it lets a lot of light through. And paired with this glass, you get excellent color, clarity, sharpness. I mean, everything looks so nice through this, even when the sun starts going down. So when it starts getting darker outside, that 34 millimeter tube is still allowing a lot of light to come through. And so when compared to, let's say, like a one inch tube diameter, this one is going to stay much brighter, much longer after that sun has dropped behind the trees or dropped behind the mountains. So 34 millimeter tubes are fantastic. Again, paired with just some of the best glass that I've ever seen. The coatings that they put on the glass, the coatings that they put on the optic itself, everything is high end. Now, one thing I do want to address, and this is something that I've seen in other people's video, I've seen people say that this optic kind of looks purple in the coating, you know, the coating kind of looks purple to them. For me, I don't see that whatsoever. To me, it just kind of looks like a dark gray. You know, they call it like their stealth gray color or something, but it, it just looks like a dark gray to me. But some people have looked at this and, and saw purple. I personally don't see that. So if you watch other videos before this where they've said that it looks purple, uh, I think that that's probably dependent on everybody's eyes and how their eyes perceive color. Uh, regardless, this is uh, super nice in the way that it's set up. And one of my favorite things about this optic has got to be that reticle. The EBR9 reticle is fantastic, but what makes it stand out is how bright it gets. So one of the notorious problems that people have with LPVOs is the brightness adjustments only get so bright. And sometimes you can't see them at all during the day. I've reviewed optics, uh, LPVOs that cost $3,000 and you still cannot see that reticle during the day. And I would expect for that much money, you'd be able to see it, right? But uh, $3,000 optics, you still can't see the reticle. Then I've reviewed other stuff from, let's say, Primary Arms and other companies, uh, Swamp Fox and stuff like that, where you get a great reticle, it's nice, it's easy to see, and it superimposes well on the target. So if you're looking at a white target, you got a nice red optic or a nice red reticle, right? This thing right here gets so bright that you can't even put it on full power in the middle of the day. So if I'm out in the desert and I'm looking through this thing and I put it on full power, I have to back it off. It is the brightest reticle that I have ever seen out of an LPVO. It is as bright or brighter than like an Aimpoint T2, which is kind of strange to me. It's coming off of an etched reticle. So again, the nice thing about an LPVO, especially with an etched reticle is if for some reason the battery dies or or you lose the, the electronics that you know turn the the emitter on, it doesn't really matter. You still have an optic that has a nice black etched reticle in it. But man, when you turn on that uh, that reticle brightness, it's, it's something you really got to see. It is really bright. Now you adjust the brightness on this by lifting up on this side. Uh, it's a little bit tough. By lifting up on that little side cap right there, which uh, allows you to see this white ring. This white ring kind of has you know, all your adjustments on it for brightness. And the nice thing about the brightness adjustments on this is that there is an off position in between each on position. So you would go from like 10 to off, to nine to off, to eight to off and so forth. So you always know that if you want to stay, let's say at eight, right? Let's say eight is perfect for me in the daytime. I can leave it on eight and then simply click one time and it's off in either direction it'll be off and then i can go ahead pop it back out turn it right back onto the previous setting i don't have to worry about anything it's just a really nice you know great brightness setting uh, adjustment that they have on here and everything's nice and tough and the fact that you push that in to make your adjustment for your brightness means you're not going to accidentally turn it on while it's in a bag or in the back of the truck or whatever uh, it's going to be locked on there so again cap turrets locking illumination this thing's phenomenal Okay, so now let's talk a little bit more about that reticle because that really matters, especially when you're talking about first focal plane. And that's because with first focal plane, especially in a, an optic like this, a one to 10, you kind of end up with two different reticles. So when you're dialed back, let's say uh, anything below six, it really is very similar to a red dot. The reticle is so small at that point because as you dial back down towards one power, the reticle shrinks in a first focal plane. And as you dial up to the max magnification, the reticle becomes bigger and then full size. But when you're dialed back, there is 
kind of just a, a red dot in the middle. Even though it's a segmented circle with a dot in the center, you can't really make that out, especially when it's illuminated, uh, at those lower power ranges. It's not until you get six or above that you can actually start seeing the segments of the circle around the dot, where you can actually use the holdovers and stuff like that. Everything's too small when you're dialed back. So very similar to a red dot between one and five power. Once you get over that, you can start seeing the segments. You can see the very small, fine red dot in the center. And then you can also start using the holdover. So you have some nice hash marks for both windage and elevation. And you also have a uh, ranging capability using the little hash marks that are on the top of the reticle itself, which can range something that's, you know, six feet tall at a specific range depending on you know where it stands within that reticle so it's got great ranging capabilities it's got excellent precision capabilities that smaller dot when you're dialed up to higher powers and you know you can use it for a precision type optic even though it's more of a tactical uh, optic in general but again dialed down red dot dialed six and above more of a precision style optic. So you have to kind of keep that in mind. That's one thing that I found when I was dialed back and I was uh, uh, just sighting this thing in on a 308, I was doing a 50, 200 yard zero. And when I was dialed back so I could see, you know, a little bit more of, of my target, uh, that's when I noticed that I had to dial in much, much closer in order to separate out those segments to see that fine dot and get a more precise shot on it. Now this also comes with an accessory that you don't see here, which is going to be a throw lever. Uh, if you guys want to see the unboxing, I'll also put a link to the unboxing video that I did on this down below so you can watch that. But it comes with the throw lever, you can install that. I like and dislike throw levers. Uh, sometimes I use them, sometimes I don't. With this one right here, it's very nice and smooth to adjust the magnification. So it's not tough to where I'm like really cranking on it and I feel like I need a throw lever. So if I don't need a throw lever, I typically leave them off. And so in this case, I'm just gonna leave it off because it's already nice and smooth and I can make my adjustments uh, by hand. But that's one thing that you're not seeing here. Now in the case, you're not gonna get any flip up caps or anything like that. There's two little plastic caps that are there just to protect the glass. I think really they're just packaging, uh, you know, a little addition to the packaging for safety, but you're not going to get any, any caps that you're going to want to use. So if you do need caps or you want to use caps, you're going to have to buy those aftermarket. But I got to tell you, my overall experience with this thing has been, uh, has been great. I really enjoyed using it. It worked out well on my 308s. I use it on a SCAR 17 just to kind of check the overall durability because that's really important. And with the SCAR 17S, the way that the recoil is managed with the short stroke uh, gas piston system, uh, you do get, you know, it can, it can wear on scopes over time and damage electronics. And I didn't have any issues with that. Also put it on Daniel Advance uh, DD5 V4, used it on that, 308, little bit extra recoil, no problems whatsoever, 556, fantastic. As far as uh, the holdovers go, this thing is set up for 556. So if you want to use those hash marks for a different caliber, you just got to figure out where it's hitting, where it's landing, and then make your adjustments and kind of, you know, get your own holdovers based off of what's in here. So you might have a hash mark where if you hold directly on it, uh, it would be, you know, like a perfect hit, right? But then if you change caliber, you might have to hold just below that hash mark and that's gonna be a perfect hit. So it's easy to make your adjustment for any caliber that you wanna put this on. Even though it is set up for 5.56, again, you can use it for uh, your 308, 65 Creedmoors, just, just about anything, 300 blackouts. So uh, it is a very nice optic. I really enjoyed using it. Uh, definitely think it's worth the money. This is one of those things where you get what you pay for. Uh, that is not the case, actually. I, I would say that that's not the case all the time. But for this instance, I would definitely say that's the case. It is a fantastic optic and worth checking out. So again, if you want more information, go over to my website, check out the links, the discount codes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, otherwise, make sure you hit that subscribe button, the little bell notification next to it, so you know when these videos come out. I want to thank you all very much for watching. Again, please like, subscribe, and have a great day.